Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be discussing my top 10 wristwatches for you guys with smaller wrists out there. And, and of course this applies for both men and women. A lot of these watches are unisex so it's uh, for everybody there with the smaller wrists. As you guys know I have very small wrists indeed but it's by no means uh, limiting to the amount of amazing watches out there, so I thought I'd share this. Long overdue, I, I have been promising to do this video for a long time, but finally we got there. Anyway, uh, quick wristwatch check. I'm still, wear I'm still wearing the same two watches as I was in the last video. Uh, it's just such a cool duo. I have the, uh, the Gijaro, the Ripley from the Aliens movie, uh, which I'm going to be reviewing next week. And of course my beloved Marathon, this is the mid-size uh, Marathon Automatic on a camouflage. Got a quartz chronograph here and a fantastic automatic diver here, really, really cool duo. Anyway, wristwatch check done, let's roll the intro and get into this video. Welcome back guys. Now, this list I've compiled here, please note that of course there's going to be you know, tens if not hundreds of watches that I, I can't fit in the list. This is simply a top ten and I've put it in an order of my own personal preference. You, you may not agree, you might, may rate some watches more than others or less than others, uh, so it's, you know, you can form your own list. Uh, but this is my, in, in my personal opinion and this is from my personal experience of uh, encountering hundreds of watches over the years. Now, a lot of people kind of miss these watches because, you know, we're still in this very much this trend, the, the, the tail end of this trend. I do see it ending of the larger watches. And I, I do think there is a, a return to more conservative mid-century sizes, which in my opinion, do look more sophisticated, do look more refined than these large monstrosities that have been so popular over the last few years. Now, there are exceptions, of course, you know, the famous Navi Timer, for example, aviation watches, certain dive watches, they are, of course, because of their use, because of the, the way that they're designed, they are supposed to be bigger. Uh, but if you have tiny wrists like me, um, there are some really cool watches that I want to share with you today. So we'll start at number 10, we'll move down the list, and as I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, uh, my throat is still a little, <coughs> still a little, uh, uh, problematic but anyway as I will move down the list I'll share with you the images of the watches uh, on this part of the screen now all these watches are 38 millimeters or below and pretty much we got uh, I would say all automatics in here there are of course quartz versions of a lot of these preferably I, I, I prefer automatics so I thought I'd make it all automatics in this list. So those are the two requirements. And we got a, we got a fair, fairly equal spread of costs. So we've got some entry level pieces and we've got some luxury pieces, and some mid range pieces as well. So a nice spread. So let's start at number 10 is the Zin 5561. And I'll put a picture up here. We got an ETA movement in there, an ETA movement 2824-2. Uh, and this comes in just under a grand at $980, beautifully designed, very simplistic, very minimalist, typical of the Zinn brand. Uh, I would say this is actually more typical than their higher end uh, watches. And it's highly overlooked. We've got a beautiful 38 millimeter case there. Lovely contrast between the, the, the bright, really crisp white markings and the, and the black dial. It's, it's very, very minimalist in design, but yet stands out. I think it's highly overlooked. I saw one of these recently on a, on a wrist of a friend and it just grabbed my attention. Zinn are a company I, 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 I profoundly respect. Uh, their quality and craftsmanship is outstanding and I think this is a highly overlooked watch. And I'm considering buying one just to review. It's a typical Zinn, you won't see anything else uh, like it and I, I think at that price range it's a really great deal. You're getting high, high quality. I mean, the quality of craftsmanship what you get with Zinn really gives the big, you know, uh, the, the, the guys at the top of the game a run for its money. They really are, I would say the overriding principle 
uh, strength of a Zin watch is its quality. They are amazing. That's my number 10. Number nine, we have the Christopher Ward Trident Pro. Now, this comes in a 38 millimeter size. I actually reviewed the first generation of this. I had the blue one. If you want to check that out, go have a look in the archives. I thought it was an outstanding watch. They, they're they just under about $700 to $700. You can find them uh, even cheaper used. This is the second generation of the Trident. This time we've got an updated design, I think a little bit cleaner. With a ceramic bezel, you get a Celita SW200 movement in there. Very reliable, very accurate, fantastic diver, very uh, tasteful design that I think will age well. And certainly the new Tridents, this generation two is, is already a step up and I highly recommend them. And I just love the Christopher Ward brand. They're a brand that's going somewhere. They're fairly new to the game, but they're definitely going somewhere. The quality and I've got to say, one of the best customer care experiences I've ever had with a watch. So, and I totally recommend them. So that's at my number nine position. Certainly would consider getting one in the collection. And it is, is also a GMT version. So uh, definitely a great deal for the money. Okay, number eight, of course, we had to put the Seiko Saab in there. I've, I've put my beloved, I should be wearing it for this, for this video. It's, uh, it's actually in the winder at the moment. Uh, but the Seiko Saab 033, uh, you know, it's, it's beat so many watches in that price range. Uh, if you don't like the 033, of course, there's the Alpamist with the famous green dial, both 38 millimeters. Actually, I think it's 37 millimeters got an in-house fantastic reliable movement with a one of the most outstanding power reserves I've clocked it at you know 52 plus hours really outstanding performance all-round amazing watch and for $400 I mean it's a domestic Japanese market watch but for $400 it just destroys all the competition at that price range and the, the Seiko Saab 033 is the undoubted king uh, in that price bracket, without a doubt, absolutely outstanding. And also, you got the style, the aesthetics of a Grand Seiko. Uh, to to anybody that glances at it, uh, it looks like a Grand Seiko. It's really outstanding watch. So that is my number eight. And I've, I've, I've you know, you could swap that out for the Alpamist or a, a lot of the really great watches from the Saab and Sarg line. Seiko really hit a home run with that one. So I've got to put the Saab in there. But anyway, that's my number eight. Number seven, we have the Max Bill by Junghans, a beautiful little Bauhaus inspired German made dress watch. Very minimalist, very kind of iconic in its styling. It really epitomizes Junghans, uh, which is a German brand with a long heritage. And I think at 38 millimeters, it, it is on the smaller size, but it, it, it looks it's really faithful to kind of mid-century uh, watches and just beautiful, understated, sophisticated design. And I had to have a, a manual uh, wind in there. It's just, it's just beautiful. So that's my number seven. Number six is the Tudor Prince Date. It's a watch that, of course, as you guys know, I, I, I recently purchased one. Do be wary of who you buy it from, but if you find a good deal, you can get a really outstanding deal on eBay. They come in three different sizes. You get the 34 millimeter version, which is the one I have. There's the 35 millimeter version and a 38. You can get them in a variety of colors. I got the one with the Ranger dial, which is very kind of Explorer 1-esque, like the Rolex Explorer. You're getting solid, reliable uh, ETA or ETA movements in there. You're getting the case made by Rolex, of course. You can get outstanding deals for, you know, even under a grand, uh, from about, I would say 800 to 1500 mark. Uh, you can pick up some really good ones on eBay, but you've got to be quick and you've got to be savvy because they come and go pretty fast. But it's a definite sweet spot in the vintage used uh, market and certainly the kind of, uh, if, you're, if you've never had a luxury watch before, it's a really great place to start. And I think bang per buck is just a, an outstanding deal. Okay, moving on. So, so that was num my number six. Number five is undoubtedly the Seiko SKX-013. It's basically the same as an SKX-007, only in a 36 millimeter size. Uh, the, the only other main difference, apart from the size difference, is the second hand has a little arrow on it. But apart from that, it's exactly the same, same movement, 
same style, same design, only smaller. So if you love the SKX and feel it's, it's too big for you, get the Seiko SKX 013. Again, there's a Japanese domestic version and a K version made in Malaysia, which I believe you can get for about $200 on Long Island watches. Uh, you're getting the legendary Seiko, a cult classic dive watch in a smaller size. And I think uh, they, they're not making them anymore, so I think they're, they're going to go up in price, certainly the domestic Japanese version. I love them. I had one many years ago. I stupidly sold it, of course. And at the time, I was kind of succumbing to the big watch trend myself, and I, I went for a much larger watch, and I, I, you know, I regret it. I should have held on to it. But an outstanding watch nonetheless. It's got that reliability, you know, it's got that day-date function. Uh, it's it's going to go, you know, 15 years I've heard these things go without a service. So uh, undoubtedly, you know, a high-ranking watch here. And it, I couldn't make this, this top 10 without an SKX in there. So it's so cool that there is a mid-size SKX. Okay, so that was, uh, what was that? That was my number five. Number four, of course, is the Omega Seamaster, the mid-size version. A lot of people get this wrong and think it's actually a ladies watch, but if you're a true connoisseur and you know, know your Omega Seamasters, you know that the mid-size is actually unisex and originally was intended just for men. In fact, Princess Diana, the late prince, great Princess Diana, uh, gave uh, the young prince, I think it's Harry, no it's not Harry, Prince William, I do apologise, and you'll see it in pictures, he's always wearing his Amiga Seamaster, the mid-size version, and what's great about this is that they're still, they're still putting them out, so the newer Seamaster 300s with the ceramic bezel, in fact I had one, I reviewed it, have a look in the archives, there is even a mid-size version of that of the ceramic bezel one as well so I, I think that's really really cool you could get the quartz one uh, etc uh, the vintage ones you can find some great deals and the best thing is because they're mid-size and and people don't really uh, consider them you can get them much cheaper than the full size you got the prestigious name brand heritage brand of Omega and, and a classic iconic watch like the Seamaster 300 but in a mid-size. I mean what could be better than that? Okay so that's my number four. My number three, well I've actually wearing it. This is my mid-size marathon. This is ISO certified diving watch. Military grade. It's one tough little cookie. I absolutely adore it and it's become a permanent uh, addition to my collection. It's a marathoner brand that have a really long history of making watches for the military, for the IDF, Canadian military, um, US government, a lot of militaries all over the world and it's, I've got to say, it's one of the most well-crafted watches I've ever experienced under the $1,000 mark. Absolutely outstanding watch. Uh, I can't speak highly enough of it, and that's why I've put it on my th number three. It's, it's, you know, if you want a mid-sized diver that, you know, is built for the task. Plus, you've got the tritium tubes in there for the loom. It's outstanding. Yeah. Also, check out the full review I did recently of this watch. I'm gonna do a new video on it very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. So that's my number three is the Marathon mid-size. Okay, so number two. Well. We haven't had any Rolexes in here. If this list had been a top 20 or top 30, there would have been countless Rolexes. I had to put the Rolex date just at number two. It's an iconic watch. It's a great all-round watch. Some may argue, oh, you should have put the Milgauss or the Explorer 1 in here. Sure, if this would have been a top 20, they would have been in there. But for me, the date just wins. Why? Well, it's the most... Uh, unlike the Explorer 1 and the Milgauss and the President Day Date, obviously, Date Just, you can get some really good bargains on some vintage ones. It's also such a versatile watch. It comes in a variety of different dials, countless combinations of colours and dials, a two tone, it's a gold one. You know, uh, uh, there's obviously, that also a worthy mention before I forget is the new Oyster Perpetual. That, that would definitely be in my top 20. But for me, the date just wins because you, you can get some outstanding deals on some older vintage models. It's a historic watch because of its Oyster case. It has achievements of its own. And I think it's just such a versatile watch. You can, you can go swimming in it, but then at the same time, you can dress it up and wear it with a suit. 
Uh, also, there's just so many combinations. There's an almost endless amount of dials and, and, and colours and, and uh, it's just an all-round, you know, it's an all-round classic. And also at 36 millimetres, you can't beat it, you really can't beat it. Okay, so what is my number one watch? 38 millimetres or below for the smaller wrist? Well, it's no surprise, it's the Omega Speedmaster Reduced. Now, I know what the purists think, oh, it's not the moon watch, it's an automatic, blah, 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 all the rest of it, but listen guys, they're not making it anymore. Okay, so it's not the man on the moon, but the heritage, the, the Speedmaster DNA is in there. It's, it's obviously a Speedmaster, you know, obviously the purists will want the Hesselite, there is a Hesselite version, and, but they'll want the manual wind movement and all the rest of it. But look, it's a great watch because it's a lot more affordable than its bigger brothers. It's a great way to get an iconic watch uh, for a very reasonable amount. Uh, it's almost unbeatable at this bang per buck ratio. Also, its size, the 38mm size, you put it on a leather strap, it looks dressy, it looks smart, you've got that iconic, beautiful Speedmaster case. Uh, it's, I, I just go, I could go on about this watch for hours. In fact, I think if you put all my Speedmaster videos together, I probably have already gone on about it for hours. It's, it's a great watch and you can get a really good deal and they're not making it anymore, so I would, I would jump on it, I, you know, don't, don't hesitate on a Speedmaster Reduced for a split second. Dress it up on a leather strap, but it also has that Speedmaster design and DNA in it, so it means it works well with a NATO strap, works well with, I mean, you could put it on any, a bright fluorescent pink NATO strap and it looks just as classy and good, trust me. It's an outstanding watch, one of the most versatile designs ever made. The Speedmaster, for me, is my pick of the bunch. You are getting a part of the Speedmaster legacy, but in a much more affordable and uh, compact size. So, you know, just because you have smaller wrists, you don't have to miss out on having an icon, you know. So, so anyway, that's my top ten. For me, having a smaller wrist all these years, uh, there's so many, it broke my heart, so many watches I absolutely adore and I simply, they just simply look stupid on me and I refuse to go into that trend of wearing a larger watch just because to try and fit in or whatever, you know, it, it, you wouldn't wear shoes two sizes too big just because um, you can't find it in your size, right? It just w wouldn't make sense. Um, so it's so important to get that right watch for you and all these watches, I fully recommend and I, and I stand by 100%. I think uh, you've got a great mix there. there. There's some really classics there. There's some classy watches. And I think actually, at the end of the day, wearing a watch smaller, without a doubt, looks more elegant. It looks more refined. And it's just generally a better way to wear a watch, you know. And, and you only have to look at Clark Gable or or the film stars of, of in the mid-century, and you'll see that. Please, down in the comments below, nominate your favorite watches, 38 millimeter diameter or below, any price bracket, I, I'm all ears, I, so please share your nominations down below, any I missed out. And of course, bear in mind, this is a top 10. I, I would have loved to do a top 20, a top 30, but of course, I would be here all day, and it'd take me about a week to edit. So, if you have the smaller risk, don't be disheartened, there's so many great watches out there to enjoy. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful, and I'll definitely catch you in the next one. Okay guys, ciao.